Welcome to Overwatch and welcome to a video all about trolls and how to deal with trolls and how to report trolls and the report system and all kinds of things going on there. In the background you'll be seeing uh, video footage from a match that I played not too long ago. This to me was the perfect example of a team that's dealing with a troll player very very well and I bet you can't guess which player is going to be the troll player. Pablo, can you play tank or healer? No, fuck off. I was originally going to try and edit out every instance of this guy's name from the match, but that would just be way too much work as I'd have to do it from the kill feed, from the actual in-game screen itself, from just everything. It would be way too much effort. So whatever, we're just not going to address him by name, however. But this guy made it very clear very early on that he was going to play what he wanted to play, and the rest of the team couldn't really negotiate with him. And so we tried to set up a proper team, we tried to play around it, and this is the thing, right? This is a team-based game. In Overwatch, you are playing with five other people, and it's super important to work well with them. If your team is playing better together than the other team, you're probably going to be the team that's going to win, right? That's, that's kind of how the game works. And like many other games, like many other, you know, MOBAs, you know, are endemic from this, if one guy has decided to not play ball with the rest of the team, then you're in a bit of trouble. And it's just a fact of life. Now, the thing you've got to try and deal with, the thing you've got to try and manage is how do you remove these people? You know, uh, Riot Games sort of loves to use the word toxic so much that it's sort of become, I don't know, this horrible term that's applied to just about everything these days. But it's not too inaccurate. How do you remove these players that are just disruptive, they are intentionally trying to ruin other people's games? That How do you get rid of them? How do you purge them? Of course, you do that with a reporting system. Now, Blizzard have actually admitted that the, the current reporting system isn't up to scratch. Jeff said in a post recently on the, the forums that they are looking into revising the current reporting system. And that, to me, is honestly somewhat high priority. Now, first things first, let's, let's get this out there. Like, the current reporting system is harassment, spam, and I think it's cheating as well. So I think those are the, like the three uh, categories you can report people for, which isn't great because quite often like the way that people do try and intentionally disrupt a game isn't through you know outright harassment it isn't through outright cheating it isn't through spam it's through basically picking really silly things and then trying to be destructive like that you know Symmetra on attack or just picking Torbjorn and just running into the enemy team luckily in this game the troll just decided to pick sort of silly picks this by the way for reference is at about 3450 average rating I think this match was at so, you know, there's a bunch of Masters tier players, a bunch of Diamond tier players that are all about 3,400. And it's it's a nightmare situation, right? Because we know that, you know, this this isn't an ideal team setup. And we're negotiating amongst ourselves, you know, how do we play with this? How do we manage this? And the thing that we do that's super well and why this game in particular is on in the background is we all keep playing. Like, even the troll is playing a normal game on his hands or on his Torbjorn. He is actually playing the game. He's not just feeding. But we're not engaging him. All people do occasionally is ask him, uh, could you switch, please? Like, that's all people ask him at the, at the start of the game. And then when they realize that he's not going to swap, they just, they kind of dropped it and just sort of said, well, we need this second healer, especially during the first half of the game. We needed a second healer. I was playing Anna. I could have swapped to something else, but I wanted to play Anna just because I think we needed the, um... One, I have enough faith in my Anna to be able to actually heal, at least for the first point, and get us that far. And two, we needed the nano boost on the Reinhardt to be able to just solidly push through. Like, it's just such a powerful tool to use that I might as well try and use it. And honestly, this is one of the things that I do see when I sort of get on my Smurf, which is a little bit lower rating, for example, or when I had to climb up from, like, mid-tier Platinum and climb towards Diamond and Masters. One of the things I did see change was how people dealt with trolls, and it is a really big thing, because one thing that people do in the lower levels is they get so fed up so quickly when something doesn't go quite their way that they'll just start almost joining in and start becoming disruptive themselves. This is why they call the behavior toxic. It sort of spreads to other people. It influences how other people play. It sort of, I don't know, makes everything foul and disgusting and horrible. But one thing that people do at the higher levels is they kind of just realize it and they just disregard it. They just put it out of their mind. Maybe they've been playing team games long enough to know how to do this. Maybe they've been playing, um, you know, they've played League, they've played Dota, they've played Counter-Strike, and they've played it enough times where they see that this guy is just not going to play ball. And you've got to understand that this is the key fundamental thing about when players do this, is they are not looking to, to play Overwatch. They are not looking to win the game. 
And so appeals to reason, like at some point during this match, I look at the guy's profile and he had a season high of about 3.9k. Like this was a guy who's hit the top 500. Appealing to him through reason, like why are you doing this? You're just going to lose this the match. There are better picks, there are better options. He already knows all this stuff. Like he has to to get that higher rating unless he's bought the account, which I, I have doubts on on that fact. But appealing through to reason to him isn't going to work. He's clearly gone in there to be disruptive, to be this negative influence, and you could tell that immediately by when someone asked, you know, oh, can we swap off the Hanzo, yeah, he so just much. shouted in the most annoying way possible, fuck off. And that just meant that, hey, okay, this guy clearly is just looking for attention, he's looking to be disruptive, he's looking to be a nuisance. And you might be thinking, well, why did you make a video all about this one guy? Surely you're feeding him attention. One, I don't think this guy watches my videos. Two, yeah, he's already sort of forgotten about. He's just an example, a good example. And the team is an even better example of how to deal with this kind of thing. Because everyone just played their game normally. They just played around him. No one engaged him in constant arguments. No one sort of started joining in with a trolling and started thinking, well, if they're picking a troll pick, I'll pick a troll pick. And so I'll pick the Symmetron attack as well. Lol, that's so funny, isn't it? No, because what you're doing then is you're reinforcing the behavior. You've shown that what his objective is, which is be, to be oh, disruptive, to be an arsehole, has worked and has caused more people to then do that. You've just got to not engage. I mean, me, Sty, Max from Cynical Nerds, over what Central guys, Ryan and uh, Miska, have all said the same thing over and over and over again when it comes to people being an arsehole, being a troll. Don't engage. That's the first key thing. You just do not engage them on their terms. You do not get into a big flaming argument with them. You just sort of have to sigh and roll your eyes. And sure, it's super frustrating, right? It is so frustrating because you then lose the match for something that isn't entirely your fault. And you'll notice, by the way, at the end of this game, you'll notice it's cut into pieces. I did try and record the entire match and then do commentary over it, but it just turned into a 25-minute video that doesn't need to be 25 minutes, to be frank. So it's sort of an abridged cut of this game. But by the end of it, spoiler, we draw. And by the end of it, the guy who was trolling actually starts picking regular picks. Like, I looked at his profile and he has a ton of hours on Genji, and he picked Genji and started playing normally, and we get to a draw. And I think he realized towards the end of the match that he'd fucked up. Like, that he had intentionally thrown a match that we really didn't need to throw. No one was really paying attention to his trolling, so that was completely ineffective. So if he just played a normal game, he could have probably had a good time. Instead of trying to disrupt things, trying to be a funny guy, he just played. Now, how do you really, really deal with this? How do you really cope with this? Because there is only one real option to me, which is go to the report system, right? And you might be thinking, oh, that's, that's going to Big Daddy Blizzard to try and deal with someone who's just being a bit of a dick. But it's the only real recourse you have. It's the only option you have. And so in this match, I think I actually reported him wrong. I think I reported him under cheating instead of harassment, which is what it sort of should have been, but there's still no apt category for, I don't know, picking troll picks. Now, you've got to understand as well that there is a difference between someone picking troll picks, intentionally bad picks, like Symmetra on attack, for example, which is, you know, clearly not really going to work, especially if they're in sort of master's level play. You're not going to be able to pull that off. It's just, it doesn't work and someone being bad. You can't report people. As much as people love to think you can do this, you cannot report someone for being bad. So if he was playing McCree but just not hitting anything, technically not a reportable offense. He's just bad at the game and he'll lose rank accordingly. Like That's how you filter that problem out. You have a proper matchmaking system. How you filter out the arseholes is you have a proper reporting system where you can then report people properly for saying, hey, he's picking intentionally bad heroes, especially for this MMR. He knows full well that this isn't going to work. He knows full well that this is going to just disrupt the game. We've asked him to change. We've asked him very politely to change as well. Like people in the team were very, very polite with this guy pretty often. And it was just, and at least until like the very end of the game, then some of the tempers just started coming out because we were all kind of annoyed because it came to a draw. Like, he was playing enough to get us to a draw. Why don't you just play a little bit harder and get us to a win? Good job. Yeah, it just it doesn't make sense. But to me, the key is to get that good reporting system in, right? And what I would like to see from the reporting system is to have options for, I don't know, like disruptive behavior, just call it that, and then have harassment or verbal harassment or chat harassment. Um, you know, harassment and abuse, that kind of thing. So you can get rid of the people who just obnoxiously flame people as well, because that's just never helpful, basically. And then you just have, you know, report options for cheating as well, so when people are actually using hacks and that kind of thing, you can report them for that. Uh, spam is also, you know, it's another category that's fine, although the, the game filters out spam pretty well. And I do think that Blizzard have it in them to actually be able to do this as well. Like, they dealt with uh, GG Easy in such a good way. Like, GG Easy has just completely vanished from at least all the games that I've played. Like, whenever it's typed, it's done completely, pretty much ironically. It's done completely as a, a side thought. It's generally laughed at, it's generally mocked, or not so much laughed at, just disregarded in the grander scheme of things. 
at the end of the day, you just got to sort of accept that you cannot control other people's behavior. And you've also got to accept the law of averages. Like, uh, for every match that you have someone on your team who you think is either intentionally disrupting the game or is actively intentionally disrupting the game, you're probably going to go up against someone doing the same thing. Now, you might be sort of on the unluckier side of the bell curve where that happens more to you uh, than it does to other people, or that could just be confirmation bias and you're just not noticing it enough. But you will have those instances where it does fall in your favor as well. So you just got to sort of shrug it off and just accept that this guy has come into the game with a completely different objective to you and the only way that you can deal with that is the report system you cannot argue with them because appealing to their reason again like I said before isn't going to work because they've come in with a different objective and as such you can only really appeal to I don't know boredom I guess just ask why what's the point and especially when it's nothing you've done during the game that sort of triggered him and sparked off the initial flashpoint then it's you have more wiggle room so here's hoping that Blizzard, well, do tighten up that report system. One thing I'd also love to see is report feedback. It doesn't even have to be a big thing, but one of the things I notice that happens a lot with reporting systems is that people feel like they don't work, they don't do anything. Where people will report people for stuff, and then they'll just get no feedback. And I'd really like just to have something, some sign that, you know, the, the reports that you've made, if you have made a report, just get a little message every now and then saying that, you know, players you have reported have received punitive actions, or something like that. Just some sign that something has happened to someone as a result of you reporting them. That way it does feel like, at least, that people are being removed from the system, or that the reports are actually coming through, and then people are getting punished for playing in negative ways. I'm sure there's a, a breadth of like textbooks or whatever in material on this on telling people what it do, do reports work, but I can tell you as a player and as someone who's played games like League of Legends, like Dota 2, like Counter-Strike, it is very frustrating when you report people and you just get nothing back, you just get deafening silence back and you just got to trust that these people are getting removed, but you still meet arseholes every so often so it feels like nothing's happening, right? And that's confirmation bias 101, you know, you see arseholes and you reported people, therefore reporting people just results in arseholes remaining. That's not quite true, that's not quite how it works. There could be new players, there could be new accounts, there could be any number of things going into this. Still, just having that tiny little bit of feedback, I think, will just reinforce confidence in the report system actually doing something. Personally, I still think it works, I still do it, I still make sure to do it, because if no one uses it, then it will never work. So you just got to hope that someone on the other side is listening, and hopefully these reports are counting for something. Now, thanks for watching to the end. This has been my thoughts on the current reporting system, how to deal with trolls a little bit, the psychology of trolls a little bit, and just where the report system is going. I want to know if you guys have any similar experiences, like what kind of arsehole-ish behavior have you met? Just people picking terrible things and charging in, feeding enemy teams alts, people building Torbjorn turrets in stupid locations, or people just standing AFK in the spawn. I'm curious to see. Toodles.